greetings to all welcome to physio tv so my name is dr harshit agrawal i'm a post graduate student at sanjeeti institute college of physiotherapy so today uh, we will be discussing about foam rolling so foam rolling is a, a very uh, popular self myofascial release technique okay so by the end of this uh, talk you will all be able to know what is the definition what are the types of foam rolling what is the mechanism of foam rolling what is the therapeutic rationale behind it what are the advantages disadvantages precautions and a backup of recent evidences so coming to the what is the foam rolling is a type of a self myofascial release wherein patient or the therapist uses their own body weight to create massage like compressive loads on the soft tissue so here the concept of massage like compressive loads given by the therapist or the patient himself using a foam in between and doing a rolling motion is very important so what it does is is the foam rolling manipulates the mechanical uh, property of the soft tissues that is the superficial fascia the deep fascia and the muscle fibers okay so it alters the mechanical property so how does how does it work so we will uh, see that in further details when we we'll learn how does it actually work it creates a rolling motion between the rolling surface and the body part and the rolling motion can be given by a therapist or the patient himself usually in msk settings the therapist himself performs the rolling motion or gives the maneuver whereas in sports or in as a part of a workout the patient himself does the rolling motion okay and he releases the entire body part he moves throughout his body surface so to create the rolling motion massage like compressive forces so those are important and it is very popularized as a part of a pre workout as a part of a post workout in a sport setting as a part of msk setting it is generally used to uh, reduce the pain as a part of a tissue preparation and what is the therapeutic rationale we'll see it uh, uh, in future slides so first we'll go through what are the types of the foam roller so the foam roller the basic foam roller and i am sure everybody is well aware about the structure then a roller massager is basically a device wherein the patient himself or the therapist himself uses the compressive is, is a roll is a roll and the patient uh, uh, rolls the bar with the hands okay then vibrational foam rolling is basically a foam roller wherein there is additional vibratory tools uh, administered into it so that it also gives the rolling motion provided and also the vibratory uh, motions given to the soft tissue structures okay it could be available it is available in different uh, length densities and design so the standard ranges from 6 to 36 inches and uh, half a size is 3 to 18 inches even a tennis ball is also a rolling device now we will see how does a foam uh, rolling works up uh, upon our body so on our soft tissue so basically our body is composed of the myofascia so myofascia has a property of visco elastic property wherein the viscous and elastic property is there to bring about the mobility in the myofascia and also a thixotrophic property which means there is a gel like composition of our myofascia which provides the adequate gliding between the superficial and the deep fascia which is required to bring about the controlled movements okay now whenever when we give the massage like compressive forces via the foam rolling there is localized increase in the tissue temperature when you are giving some maneuver there is increase in the blood supply by which there is in turn there is increase in tissue temperature and also so as in there is uh, blood supply so there is more healing so there is more wash out of the uh, aggregated substance and also it brings about elongation or stretching of the myofascia by a uh, via dynamic stretching so it provides a dynamic stretching and elongates the collagen fibers or the fibers of the myofascia then it provides a, a mechanotransduction 
so how does it do it uh, the uh, the neurophysiological pr principle is behind this is it stimulates the neural receptors and brings about pain gate mechanism which helps in reducing the pain perception okay so uh, it also stimulates the parasympathetic system which brings about the relaxation of the uh, muscles and the fascia then it also provides it is basically similar to mfr all the uh, uh, the physiology behind is more or less similar to mfr it also brings about the pain uh, descending pain suppression system where wherein endogenous in uh, encephalins and opioids are released which gives a sense of uh, uh, pain relief it also reduces fatigue and perception of fatigue uh, because it increases the blood supply there and it leads to the washout of the gush out of the accumulated substances. Uh, yeah. Now I want to explain the circle which is a cycle which is given here which is more important given in this sports training. So, usme, so in that, so there is a cumulative injury cycle in which we will start, let's say, suppose for an example of a boxing. So, let's say ki, uh, the one hand is uh, uh, injured. So, there is a tissue trauma followed by an inflammation followed by a protective guarding, which is the muscle spasm. If that muscle spasm is not cleared, it will lead to adhesions. It, it might it might lead to the adhesions in the soft tissue, in turn leading to the altered neuromuscular uh, control, the muscle imbalances, and the muscle imbalances will be uh, making the patient prone to more injuries. So, what a, a, a foam rolling will intervene is basically it will help in recovery. So, in recovery, during the muscle spasm post-injury or post play so the muscle spasm will be reduced with the help of foam rolling which will be prevent which will prevent the formation of adhesions okay adhesions or any trauma to the soft tissue structures and in turn the cycle will be altered okay so the foam rolling will be uh, intervening by reducing the muscle spasm following an injury okay or it will help in active recovery so we know the recoveries are active and passive okay so it will help in active recovery more or less more specific to the sports setting so yeah now we will study now that we have seen about what is the physiological mechanism behind the foam rolling now we will study what is the therapeutic rationale why should we do it what it does to us so it, uh, in, uh, it helps to uh, increase the blood pressure, uh, blood supply and uh, it reduces the fatigue, it calms down the muscle. So it is helped in tissue preparation prior to the exercise as a part of warm up or adjunct. Okay, so before exercise, if we just do a foam rolling, it will help the muscles to uh, it. it surely increases the blood supply so it will help the tissues to perform better so everything in the rationale is interrelated and also when as we have seen in that cycle post exercise when the muscles are overworked there is accumulation of lactic acids or the metabolites so post exercise cool down may be uh, foam rolling could be used as a uh, cool down adjunct which will help in again recovery muscle recovery so post exercise also uh, foam rolling can be given also before uh, as a part of warm up it can be it should be combined with stretching which uh, enhances the flexibility of the myofascia you know it works on the myofascia it works on the neurophysiological properties of the myofascia it works on the mechanical distension of the myofascia combining it with stretching enhances the overall flexibility and in turn uh, makes the patient to perform better in his exercises or better in his sport okay so also as we know that it stimulates the neuro or uh, uh, receptors so it helps in pain relief how by giving a pain gate mechanism and the descending uh, inhibitory control okay it can also be safely given 
as a home exercise pro uh, program for patients wherein they can release themselves by themselves by proper technique and proper dosage should be explained to them so that they know that they are doing the right thing and it is helping them. Now, in the previous cycle, the cumulative injury cycle that we have studied the injury cycle, so uh, to prevent the injury that we know that we are doing, giving the recovery to the muscle, so it will help in intern uh, injury prevention, okay? Again, so there is very important concept whenever there is high loads put on the uh, accustomed high loads put on the muscle. So sometimes there is increased soreness which is delayed onset muscle soreness uh, which is between 24 to 72 hours post the intense bout of exercises. Foam rolling immediately after the heavy bout of exercise helps in reducing the delayed onset muscle, spas uh, muscle soreness. How? By increasing the blood supply, by reducing the, calming the myofascia, by reducing the pain perception, by reducing the fatigue. So everything you can uh, imagine that everything here is uh, correlated. Okay? Enhances functional performance by how? By reducing the dom, uh, uh, DOMS perception, fatigue perception. It is enhancing the flexibility and as a part of tissue uh, preparation also so overall an athlete or a patient will have a in, might have a enhanced performance again we had talked about it it will help in muscle recovery recovering from a heavy bout of exercise a uh, active uh, stretching maneuver uh, uh, combined amalgated with a foam rolling will help in better recovery, reducing the DOMS and enhancing the performances. Again, it will help to uh, correct the imbalances. How? Again, if I am doing a particular set of exercises, if if there is injury, so there might be a chance of muscle imbalances that might develop, but foam rolling will intervene that cycle and might recover the muscles there and then and it will help in extensive uh, provide the extensibility of the myofascia again improve neuromuscular efficiency as the pain goes down as the fatigue levels go down it will help in better neuromotor control better performance again better neuromotor control okay then suppression of muscle trigger points so what are muscle trigger points are basically Okay, suppression of muscle trigger points. In that, mus uh, muscles, when they are overworked, they usually form a tight, uh, not like structures in them, which is ATP deficient, overworked. So when you are releasing with the myofascia, you are releasing them to, or you are preventing them to uh, form. You're not allowing them to form, more or less. Okay, so this was the, a uh, construct of the therapeutic rationally behind the foam rolling why is it given and how it helps okay now we will study the effects of foam rolling uh, on performance and recovery so this is an evidence from 2019 in the journal of frontiers of physiology a meta-analysis on the effects of foam rolling on performance and recovery by Themo Vivil Hove. This, um, uh, this study aimed to compare the effects of foam rolling before and after exercises on performance and recovery by using the outcomes, functional outcomes such as sprint, jump, strength, uh, performance, flexibility, muscle pain perception. So these were the outcomes which were considered in this meta-analysis and they also investigated whether the effectiveness of a self-massage using a foam roller versus a roller massager which is given by hand, not with the body weight. Okay, so there and their impact on performance and recovery measures. So those outcomes are similar, but now the device is changed. One is foam roller and the other one is roller massager. Now this is the uh, uh, construct of uh, the effects which they have got as a part of pre-rolling uh, effect, as a part of post-rolling effects. So I have given, uh, uh, given here the effect size. 
So the sprint performance, jump performance, strength performance, the effect, uh, the effect size was negligible. Whereas the pre-rolling, uh, the effects of pre-rolling on flexibility was effect size of 0.34, which is good. Uh, and muscle pain perception was also can, can be considered. And uh, post-rolling effects on sprint performance was something, the effect size was something which should be considered, which is providing a uh, effect. And uh, jump performance and strength performance are uh, not, uh, the effect size wa was not adequate, was not sufficient to conclude. Then the, when they did the objective number two, comparison between the foam rollers and roller massagers, when they got the outcomes, what we, uh, they got was foam rollers as a part of strength performance has a better effect size than a roller massager, which is given by a hand, which is a rolling tool, uh, like a rolling pin uh, moved around the uh, body structure. So again, uh, I am revising. It's a meta-analysis of 2019. Uh, which uh, segregated, which aimed to compare the pre-rolling effects or post-rolling effects as in after the exercises, pre as a part of warm-up, as a part of uh, cool-down. So pre-rolling meant uh, it worked better for flexibility and muscle pain perception again. And in post may uh, it helped in better recovery. So the sprint performance was enhanced. Looking at the effect sizes. Now, uh, we will study another article of 2024 given in my, uh, B, BMC Musculoskeletal Journal titled as Effect of Foam Roller, Foam Roller on Pain Intensity in Individuals with Chronic and Acute Musculoskeletal Pain, a Systematic Review of Randomized Trials. The aim of the study was to analyze the effects of foam roller on pain intensity in individuals with acute and chronic um, musculoskeletal pain. So in all, they chose, uh, they extracted six uh, RCTs with an average Pedro scores between six plus and minus 1.29, which average at fair to good range. Out of the four, the uh, four studies considered the short term follow up. One study can consider the immediate follow up after the release, and um, one study had a medium uh, follow up. Out of the six uh, studies included, five were on the chronic musculoskeletal pain. The conditions which were covered, uh, which were considered, were PFPS, non specific low back pain, non specific neck pain, plantar fasciitis, and acute, uh, and uh, in acute pain or uh, post surgical pain of uh, total knee arthroplasty was considered. So, the inclusion criteria for this study were. Randomized clinical trials published in peer-reviewed journals written in English, chronic and acute MSK pain with the pain intensity being the primary or the secondary outcome measure using uh, NPRS or VAS. The diagnosis of the acute and chronic pain followed the British Pain Society definition. Now what the results they extracted were... Uh, only out of six, only two studies demonstrate a significant benefit or a positive effect in pain intensity, particularly pain intensity when a foam rolling was accompanied with a therapeutic exercises protocol. Be it therapeutic exercises uh, consisted of uh, for individuals with PFPS and chronic neck pain. So those two studies which demonstrated the significant benefits were PFPS and chronic neck pain. So only, and they when they pulled the data, they got to know uh, that it was in uh, it was not sufficient, and they do not provide conclusive evidence supporting the clinical use of foam rolling, and varying. Uh, and they also demonstrated the varying application times, techniques of foam rolling uh, interventions across the studies contributed to the complexity of drawing definitive conclusions, so that. Since there was such heterogeneity amongst the uh, data, they couldn't give a meta-analysis and a proper uh, conclusive evidence. 
Now we will study about what are the precautions to be taken while giving foam rolling. Avoid rolling under the bony prominences. For example, be it patella, be it lateral malleolar. Okay, so uh, avoid rolling it under the bony prominences as it can give overpressure over those structures and giving rise to any injury. Post after an acute injury, uh, this is contraindicated or should, if given, should be uh, given with uh, precautions. Okay? Over an uh, area of inflammation, when there is an acute inflammation, massaging techniques which might increase uh, the inflammation is avoided. Uh, any sensitive skin conditions which might uh, lead to uh, sensitivity towards the foam applied then adequate dosage to avoid bruising so whenever giving it for the patients a proper dosage should be considered which should be customized which should be uh, given to the patient so as to avoid over doing the foam rolling and avoiding the bruising now discussing about the dosage which should be given for a foam rolling for that i have an article foam rolling prescription a clinical commentary given by david behem uh, they concluded that foam rolling prescription should be given for one to three sets of two to four amplitude totaling about 30 to 120 seconds per set to improve the range of motion effectively they also say so as to enhance the uh, enhance the efficacy of the foam uh, rolling maneuver a former type of a roller pressure should be as much as possible or as much as uh, tolerated by the patient with an amplitude of three seconds and the time spent on the sensitive structures should be taken uh, should be considered and with a moderate speed so what is time spent on uh, sensitive structures where when the patient feels that here there is a uh, pain perception coming so more uh, focusing on those target areas will enhance the efficacy and more formal uh, quality of the roller in this sense uh, which is more or less less uh, less uh, more rigid more rigid variety of a foam roller will enhance the efficacy and pressure should be as much as uh, possible to be given or as much as tolerated by the patient within a moderate speed. Now we will discuss about the techniques. So mainly large group of muscles are usually targeted with the foam rolling uh, technique in this. You can, uh, the, uh, the most commonly given are IT band, hamstrings, back, gast gastrosoleus complex, plantar fascia, glutes and piriformis. So here in this diagram, so they have uh, the patient is doing self uh, myofascial release using a foam roller and he is performing a uh, full body weight uh, foam rolling techniques for different muscle groups. So for IT bands, the sideline position for hamstrings, uh, long sitting positions and making a to and fro motions that is with a full body weight or as much as possible. Then for gastrosoleus complex, for plantar fascia, you can use a tennis ball uh, or a tennis ball is fine. Then for glutes and piriformis, uh, the techniques are given. So now what are the disadvantages of the technique? So it creates a dependency of an athlete or a patient as a pre-workout or a pre-session uh, uh, release. So it might create a dependency there or the efficacy as in to break out, break down the scar tissue uh, is questionable. Rather, it prevents only the formation of scar tissue. As we have learned in that cumulative injury cycle, it prevents the formation of scar tissue, but the breakdown of scar tissue is questionable. But do there are some studies which uh, support this uh, thought then the depth of penetration is questionable. So these are the disadvantages of the technique. 
so now to summarize the topic we have learned the definition what are the types of the foam roller used how does it work what is the physiology behind it then what is the therapeutic rationale ki uh, in what uh, school of thought should be given by prescribing a uh, foam rolling uh, maneuver to the patient or after that we have studied what is the its effect the recent evidences which say ki what uh, how does it affect as a part of pre rolling post rolling and whether rolling uh, roller or uh, rolling massager is more effective in that one study then we also studied uh, how does it affect the chronic and acute musculoskeletal pain uh, then after that we have studied uh the ideal dosage how should it be cons considered and the precautions and the disadvantages so i conclude my uh, session here these are the list of my references used for this presentation thank you thank you physio tv for giving the uh... okay so this are my list of references uh, used for this uh, powerpoint presentation so i conclude my session and uh, i would like to thank the sanjeeti college of physiotherapy dr parag sir dr manisha ma'am and dr apurva shimpi for give dr apurva shimpi okay so this this are my list of references used for this uh, powerpoint presentation hereby i conclude the session and i would like to thank uh, sanjeeti institute college of physiotherapy and uh, dr parag sir dr manisha ma'am and dr shimpi sir for giving me this opportunity and the physio tv team for arranging this wonderful uh, setup and thank you thank you for this opportunity